All right, so are these Apple rumors keeping you from buying? And what are we actually going to do to help get you to make that investment in yourself? I know it's really unfortunate that we have to be here again and watching all of these videos just, you know, I think it really just contributes to the problem. So I always recommend go out there and do those things that matter. And for those of you that actually want to stick around on this one, I'll see you in there. What is going on, you beautiful humans? Welcome back here for an additional discussion on making that buying decision. And of course, I know, as I've said before, this is not really a rumor and you know news channel when it comes to just Apple news here, but it seems to keep getting peppered in. So um, I really actually just wanna take this opportunity again to really hone in on the, the crossroads that many of you here in the community where you are, where you seem to be, and whatever these rumors and leaks are, you know, they seem to be slowing down your investment in what it is that you actually need to do to get done, especially with the M1X. And of course, yes, we've actually seen the leaks, even starting over at CPU Monkey, on how capable the proposed M1X is, but can we say with 100% certainty that this is a true benchmark of what's to come? And of course, I really do like my eyebrows. So the only thing that I'll say here is that it may not be far off, if really at all. And as we continue to get these leaks, which both past and present have actually been through, oftentimes through versions of, of beta Mac OS or beta iOS as they get released to developers. And depending on the device that we're talking about here, but talking about Mac OS in this case, with this information, it has actually been discovered that there are some hardware references to an iMac 21.1 and iMac 21.2, which these do appear to represent iMacs that are not on the market as far as we know. And of course, if you have even seen the news about the 21.5 inch iMac, especially on Apple, if you've gone to Apple, they're consolidating over there. They're consolidating these offerings as far as customizing it. So if you are interested in picking up a current 21.5 inch iMac, while they're still available at whatever iteration that you can get, don't. I do think that Apple is working on some retooling efforts here with their manufacturing partners. And based on my own experience from past entrepreneurial endeavors, this can actually take some time, money, and effort, which considering what the world has actually been through in the last year, it's gonna take a little bit more of those resources to implement. Now, of course, let's actually bookmark this statement that I just made about the sort of that retooling and the delays on some of those things, because I want to I want to actually talk about that later on. So with these two previous previously unknown referenced um, iMacs, I have actually heard from others that that seem to be that as far as a 24 inch coming in to play here, we are looking at likely an M1 14 inch, and then an upgraded version that will actually have the M1X. And I had stated this before. I did in a previous video when it came to the M1 uh, regarding the 14 inch, as far as the 14 inch MacBook Pro and having M1 as a starting point and then even having an upgrade option of the M1X. And as far as the M1 being an option to be in, you know, in the rumored 24 inch iMac, I do think that this is a possibility. I think it's still very capable. I really do. And this M1X featuring those 12 CPU cores, eight high performance and four efficiency, whereas there are rumored to be 16 GPU cores. So the base model, of course, starting at around 1299, my prediction anyway, and, and several others, which I know that the current 21.5 does start at 1099, but honestly, I think that where that currently starts, I don't think that that is going to be a starting point any longer. I think it's just gonna be non-existent. That's just, those are my thoughts. But I do still think that eight gigs of RAM is very much a possibility um, at that base price. And that may, uh, that, that really just may be a big disappointment for many of you who are waiting, but we likely just have to kind of see what that's gonna look like and it'll still have that very precious IO. And I don't know if they're gonna be adding any IO on the, on the back of that thing, but what they will likely have is an updated mini LED, hopefully XDR-like panel. 
And which I think really what it comes down to, I think a lot of the value is within that panel and, and really that screen because that all-in-one really has been a, a hard-pressed value. Like when you're really kind of looking at something comparable, uh, uh, like a 4K display, and I know like the 5K Retina, but we're probably talking about 4K display here. And it's, it is plenty gorgeous. And what we really hope will continue to hold some color accuracy for those that really need that, but it is real, you'd be hard pressed to find a 4K display that is within the iMac ecosystem there. I mean, it, it's hard to find a monitor that's even equivalent to that for the price. But because of all the manufacturing delays around the world and the demands in the technology, um, really kind of increasing, which I can certainly speak about that for my non YouTube business related uh, demands that ours actually increased by 50%. And it has been really hard to procure a lot of that hardware. So over the last year, it's, it's been kind of rough. And I mean, really as a side note, thankfully I'm actually able to use my Vega 64 GPU that I have left over from my, G my eGPU setup with my MacBook Pro because I've got a gaming rig over here that we're gonna be bringing on the channel that we're gonna be building. But my point being is that with all of the GPUs and all of the manufacturing delays and of course the crypto mining, and not to mention the fact that these GPUs are being traded like crypto with all of these inflated prices, it's really frustrating for most. And that kind of sets my point up here. This leads me into a couple of thoughts that I have. First, I don't really see any additional options in the upcoming iMac to really offer discrete graphics cards because both really, I think that the 24 inch would be aligned with 21.5 in that it's considered unnecessary and, an, and really an entry point into the iMac space, especially with the chipset. I really think that if this was a possibility down the road, I'd say that these will be reserved for the larger display, 32 inch, again, is what it's rumored, and really coming out later this year and replace what has been removed recently, the iMac Pro. And with that additional M1X, maybe scaled up even more, giving it more CPU and GPU cores. But second, and this is actually where I'd really like to emphasize the manufacturing concerns, is that for those of you that waited on the M1, you waited a little like longer after the release, and then you had to wait an additional month or even longer for some of you to get that built to order system. And of course, I understand that that was frustrating, which as time went on and as time does go on, especially now, you might be thinking, well, we're just closer to the next big thing, right? And here's what I have to say, which I've said before on the channel, the M1 that's inside the mini, the 13 inch MacBook Pro and the MacBook Air, although it's boring. And what I mean by that, let me just sidestep here. What I mean by that, it is, it's plenty capable and it has outperformed expectations, but kind of like, uh, like a Honda Civic or a Toyota Corolla which I've also said this before in a previous video because it's not necessarily much to look at. It doesn't look like much under the hood, but they hold their own and may actually even outperform. And in many cases they have, you know, just like other vehicles in a higher class, but still boring. But putting on my dad beanie here as I have it on, this is where things are not boring because if you value your time as I value my own and I do value your time, then you'll understand that time wasted, actually, it doesn't come back, it is gone. So if you're holding out for this iMac, that, that this thing is gonna be launching here in the very foreseeable future, then I would just make sure to emphasize on this one to not sit on your hands, because yes, there are gonna be tons of videos within the YouTube community doing all of this testing. I love testing, you know that, but you continue to go down one rabbit hole after another and, and finding yourself in that waiting game again. These manufacturing issues are not going to go away anytime soon. So if you want a bill to order and you wanna go after this, you've been waiting for it, try not to wait like you've been waiting on the M1 if you, if you waited on the M1 and you felt like, well, it's just, it's too late. And then you just kept waiting. Because as capable as these upgraded 24 inch IMAX will be, do keep those expectations realistic as we would with that 21.5 inch model. And granted, they are going to be le like a leap uh, beyond that because what the M1s have done, we know what those are capable of. And yeah, it's gonna have a beautiful display, but still at 24 inches. 
So these machines will be capable of quite a bit as the M1s have already proven, although I still believe that if you are a professional or you're a prosumer and, in, and if you're in the audio, the video or any of the design space here and you're working with apps and software that is not yet optimized, I do still think it's a reason for pause. And honestly here, you may just want to build yourself a custom rig like we'll be building um, that's actually gonna serve your needs a bit better, it, especially right now. And of course, speaking of right now, if you've actually done the research and you know what you're working on and you're working with and that it's optimized for Apple Silicon, then, you know, I still think that the M1 is an awesome machine and the desire to future-proof yourself just because the rumors are always out there and you're always wondering about that one more thing that could potentially come along and especially on the heels of the iPad Pros while you're still sidelined on your work, your projects, your YouTube channel, your Zoom calls day in and day out. I mean, that is time lost. The M1 that for the price to performance, it is so hard to beat because I do think, like if you're waiting on that iMac, I, I completely understand. And of course that 24 inch iMac, I do believe it makes sense for it to come out before the 14 inch and the 16 inch uh, MacBook Pros, not just because of the manufacturing issues and the retooling and the redesign, but you already have a very capable M1 Ultrabook and 13 inch Pro that really wipes the floor with anything that's available right now and in the foreseeable future. So if you can continue to wait, wait if you can, appreciate the tech that you have and make it work for as long as you possibly can. But if you're hemorrhaging time and your productivity, then the tough love here, the dad love here, that's on you. So here's the thing. It's up to you. Hang out with me on Twitter if you want. I will be over there. You can definitely find me here in the YouTube comment section. So I'd love to converse there, answer any questions and just chat it up. But until next time, you go out there and do those things that matter. You keep rocking the faces and be a good human. I will keep creating more value, more testing for you here. So until next time, I will catch you right back here on the next one. Think it'll work this time?